Hello everyone, it's me again, Dr. Babatunde Okewale. Today I will be talking about tuba blockage as a cause of infertility. But before I go on into details, let me quickly explain to you how pregnancy occurs naturally. There are basically five requirements. The first is the sperm of the man must be of good quality and also of good quantity. The second requirement is the woman must know her fertile period. The third is the inside of the womb must be able to accept and be able to keep a pregnancy. There shouldn't be anything inside the womb that will disrupt pregnancy, whether it's a fibroid, a polyp, or an infection. The fourth thing is the fallopian tubes must be open so that the eggs that are formed on the ovary can pass through the fallopian tube and meet with the sperm because it is in the fallopian tube that fertilization occurs. And then finally, the woman must be producing quality eggs every month. So we're talking about the fallopian tubes. Is that organ that connects the ovary to the inside of the womb. Every month when a woman ovulates, the fallopian tube picks up the egg and if pregnancy is going to happen, the sperm will meet with the egg inside the fallopian tube and fertilization would occur in there. When the fallopian tubes are blocked, it could be total blockage, it could be bilateral blockage, that is the two fallopian tubes are blocked, it could be unilateral blockage, that is only one tube is blocked, and it could be partial blockage. But whichever type of blockage, we know that it accounts for 40% of all infertilities. There's a special type of tuba blockage that is called hydrosalpings. What happens in hydrosalpings is the proximal end of the fallopian tube is blocked. And because of that, fluids accumulate and they can't pass out and then it accumulates inside the tube and form what we call hydrosalpings. Hydro means water. So what are the symptoms of tuba blockage? Most of the time, there are no symptoms. We call that asymptomatic. Most of the time, the first time a woman knows that her tubes are blocked is when she goes to the hospital and complains of infertility. Sometimes, if the woman has hydrosalpings, there might be some symptoms. Because of the swollen tubes, she might complain of lower abdominal pain, and sometimes she might complain of some vaginal discharge. And sometimes, the symptoms of blocked tubes might be the symptoms of what is blocking the tubes, especially in endometriosis. So a woman might complain of all the symptoms of endometriosis, which could include painful menstruation, painful intercourse, and also infertility. And so what causes to have blockage? The number one cause is pelvic inflammatory disease, otherwise called pelvic infection. What causes pelvic infection is mostly caused by sexually transmitted infections. And the commonest ones are gonorrhea and chlamydia. Tuba blockage could also be due to uterine infection. How could the uterus be infected? It could be infected if one had an unsafe miscarriage or abortion. Infection could be introduced and it will travel upwards until it blocks the tube. Sometimes the tube is blocked because of abdominal surgery for something else. Sometimes when you're doing 
a uterine fibroid operation, if it is being done by someone who is not well versed in the procedure, they could tamper with the tubes and in the process cause tuber blockage. Tuber blockage could result from a previous ectopic pregnancy. In previous ectopic pregnancy, most of the time, the treatment is the removal of the tube, what we call serpentectomy. Tuber blockage could be as a result of tuber surgery. Sometimes when you are trying to treat tuber blockage, a, a woman undergoes what we call tuber surgery. And instead of relieving the tuber blockage, it makes it worse. And like I said earlier on, it could also be caused by endometriosis. It could sometimes also be caused by fibroid, especially when the fibroid is compressing on the tubes themselves. So how do you diagnose this? There are basically four ways of knowing whether a woman has tuber blockage. The first way is through an X-ray that is called HSG, hysterosarpingogram. Through that X-ray, some dye is put inside the womb and as the dye is going through the womb, through the tubes, X-ray shots are taken and it tells us whether the tube is open or not. Another way is by doing what we call laparoscopy and dye test. Laparoscopy basically means you use a small telescope to have a peep inside the woman's pelvis. And whilst we are looking at the tube, a dye is passed from below. And if the dye flows through the tube, you would see it. It is a direct view. And it's one of the best ways of diagnosing tuber blockage. Other ways of detecting tuber blockage include a contrast sonohysterogram and hysteroscopy. So what's the treatment for tuber blockage? Most people that complain of tuber blockage are trying to get pregnant. So the treatment usually is some form of assisted conception. In fact, the best treatment for bilateral tuber blockage is IVF. IVF came about because of tuber blockage. So it's the best treatment for it. Sometimes you might need surgery if you can't afford IVF. And the kind of surgery you do for tuber blockage could either be an open surgery or it could be a laparoscopic surgery. A decision on what is best for you will depend on how bad the tuber blockage is. And the question your doctor will be asking himself is, is it bilaterally blocked? Is it unilaterally blocked? Is it partially blocked? Or is it a situation of hydro -sapings? To know more about tuber blockage and infertility, I would recommend my book called How to Get Pregnant and Have a Baby. It's available on Amazon. Thank you for listening and watching. And I hope you subscribe to our YouTube page. Thank you very much.